You know, if we talk about the race in ancient Egypt and we try to look at the ancient Egyptian and find out the origin of this people, it's so difficult. When you look at the statues that were colored black, it doesn't mean anything. Sometimes black can show the fertility of the land. That when the king showing himself in black, he's really assuring the fertility of the land. Uh, it is a very strange story uh, and uh, hasn't been told properly. Uh, the antiquities in Egypt have uh, been in the hands of a very confusing background. Uh, for a long time they were open for, for, for anybody to, to help themselves. Uh, and uh, since the 1950s, uh, uh, although under Egyptian um, uh, authority, uh, and Zahi is the last in line of these uh, of these uh, directors. He's now a minister because they've, they've made it into a ministry. Uh, the the rule of Zahi Hawass has been a rather strange one, I must say. And uh, I've met him many many times, uh, and I must say that I'm not clear uh, at all uh, as why this man is still there. One of the things that I uh I'm hoping would come out of this, although now I'm a little bit concerned again, was that when the revolution happened, uh, Zahi Hawass was taken out of his position of power of the ant antiquities. Um, and I thought, well, maybe some of the alternative history or evidence that has come out that has uh, looked at the history of Egypt would actually would become recognized by scholars, but then he was put back in place, and so I'm not quite sure how that's going to play out. But do you have any thoughts as far as uh, information, historical information, that I, I would think that you think is being suppressed, I think is being suppressed in Egypt, if that will start to come out as being uh, real? Uh, there is been all sorts of accusation in public about corruption, about uh, trafficking of antiquities. But the man is, I mean, they begin to call him Mr. Teflon. I mean, he's, nothing sticks. <laughs> he, so that tells me uh, something that is a bit worrying, that there is, there, is, there is something behind this, and I can't phantom it. And it seems to stem from a rather unusual support coming from the United States. Uh, there is a very keen uh, um, support for him coming from rather high quarters, particularly in, in, in the big media, uh, to have him there. Uh, but that's it. I, beyond that, I, have, I really don't know what's, what's keeping that man there. Um, as for uh, the alternatives, um, getting permission, I'm not quite sure what's going to happen. He, he has been rather um, difficult, to say the least. Uh, in allowing people to research there. Uh, he has, not just the alternatives, he has been very aggressive towards other uh, fellow Egyptologists should they step uh, in, on his turf. Uh, he has uh, caused a lot of problems to, to, um, to Joanne Fletcher, the, uh, the British Egyptologist, when she announced the discovery of Nefertiti's mummy, he, he just went bananas. I mean, that's the whole thing. It changes it the history, and, and he doesn't seem like he wants it to change. Well, it changes the history, it changes the geography, but it changes something else, which I think is not uh, something Zahi wants to, to change, is that Zahi was, is very much against the, the, uh, the notion that the pharaohs originated in black Africa. You know, he's, he's very, very uh, anti-black Africa. So, uh, but, you know, he can half and pass. I mean, the evidence is coming out and it, 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 it's not published. Uh, but when you look uh, at the statue, the statuary of a number of the pharaohs, you know, they look a little weird. But if you put in your mind, this is a person <laughs> that has Negroid features, you know, then the big lips and the flat nose make a whole lot more sense. Yes. Uh, it depends which period you're talking about. Uh, uh, agree. Uh, agree. There is no doubt in my mind at all that uh, the uh, or original ethnic uh, uh, 
appearance of the, the, the Egyptians, or what we call the Egyptians, the original Egyptians, were black Africans. You don't have to have statues. I mean, all you have to do is go in the south. If you go in the Nubian area, the, the Egyptians are black. I mean, they're black, black African. Uh, and when you definitely go in the Sahara and you go in the oasis, uh, the majority of people are black. They're descendants from these original prehistoric people. There is no doubt at all. Uh, there are pictures of these black African Egyptians in Kiprogenesis. I mean, it's very, very obvious. Uh, however, uh, we're talking about the the early stages when these people came and settled in the Nile, when these black African people came and settled in the Nile. Now, what happened a thousand years later, uh, yes, of course, there was a migration from the Levant, there was migration from the Mediterranean, and the race began to mix, and this is why you have a very varied uh, people in Egypt. You can range from almost uh, Caucasian, which comes from the mixture of Turkish and Syrian and European, to the dark black African. I mean, there are black Africans who are blacker than, than black Africans in Egypt. I mean, wonderful people. Uh, the Nubians are extraordinary people. Their, their features are so obviously uh, sub-Saharan. So, to me, there is no doubt. But, of course, you know, it depends. If you're talking about the Middle Kingdom, then it's not surprising that you find all this mixture of, uh, of uh, ethnic groups because they had intermingled by then. But, uh, it's a bit like uh, the United States, you know. I mean, there was originally uh, the American Indian, but now you have a hotspot of, uh, of, uh, of races. What's happened over the last 300 years is, is this mixture, and that's only 300 years. So if you look at Egypt 3,000 years, it's not surprising at all that there is uh, that variety. But the origin, like in America, was black African, there's no doubt. And it's so, it's so obvious. I mean, Egypt buttresses against Africa. Its southern frontiers are in Africa. Egypt is an African country. You know, it's, we, have, we have a tendency to call it the Middle East, but Egypt is in Africa. You know, it's in North Africa, but it's in Africa. And it, it, the Nile is fed from Central Africa. 